We're there. Live. We are live. You got it? We got it. We got it. We're live. Do you see it on the page yet? Uh, I see it on the page. I see it on the page. I want to... I gotta show. I want to. I want to make sure I share it to. Okay. Uh, what you want to do now, guys? Uh, first of all, we apologize to everybody. Um, yes. We ran into some really big glitches here, but we we got it worked out, and we're here now. And uh, wait. Hello. Just, uh, you you want to take this and share it on your pages? So. Um, I don't see a share button now. Boy, I've I've never run into so many crazy. Yeah, there should be a share, like, comment, and share. Do you see one on there? Uh, I do. I just shared it uh, to my page. Okay, I got it. I'm going to share it to Nancy Kelly. Ronnie, you should share it to your page. Okay, I, I hope I can do that. Um, hey, uh, Ronnie? Yes? Uh, NASA called and said they, they would rather we don't be involved in their next uh, rocket launch. So, oh man, do, do, do they know what they're missing out on, man? Oh, uh, exactly, exactly. Not you seeing know, any, I mean, not seeing any comments yet. That's a, that's a little concerning, but um, Sarah, I hope people. Dino Lacito is here. I I don't know where you know. Uh, well, oh, there's Dino. Okay, yeah. what's for? Oh, they, all right. Thank dinner. you, Dino. Oh, oh, actually, oh. I'll tell you what's for dinner. Uh, right. I, was gonna make, I was gonna make some chicken piccata because I had some fresh organic spinach, and I thought I would make the chicken piccata and put all the yummy juices. Look at Eric! Look at his face. He's gone. Damn. What? Well, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm just sitting. Here, I, I'm just sitting here right now, knowing that number one, I'm the worst singer of this group, and I'm also by far the worst cook of this group. Because listen, I know Nancy's cooking although i haven't actually tasted it but I, I do know from seeing pictures and hearing stories that nancy knows what to do in the kitchen and and, and ronnie lee you also uh can whip up a, a dish or two am i am i uh, am i right on that well i i nobody's died yet nobody's uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but i'm damn near there <laughs> all right well, good that's a good sign you know so I mean, you know, <laughs> I haven't heard any complaints, but everybody's still breathing, you know, so it's okay. I'm still trying to figure out how to get you guys, how I can share this with you guys. Well, I shared it. I'll share it to your page, Ronnie. Let me. Great. I think I can do that. Um, Great. I'm sorry for all this fussing around, everybody, but man, this for some reason went cuckoo. Oh, you don't, you can't, you have your sharing turned off, so I can't do that. Oh, I do. Okay. Well, then maybe that's why I'm not sharing. <laughs> hey, Dino, hey, Dino, you have any other questions? I mean, Dino's the only person uh, in the room right here. Um, but we got 10 on now. Okay. Oh, we got 10. Yeah. Feel free to comment. People are starting to find us. Cuckoo. Cuckoo. You got to turn, that's me. You got to turn the, 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 the volume off on the, the one from Facebook. There, well, now, that's the best I can do. It's on my page. It's on our new page. Now, I have a que I have a question, Nance. Yeah. It's kind of a technical question. I, I was gonna I was gonna play a little something, sort of as an intro to Ronnie. Now, of course, he's already here. I was gonna play something, but I guess if I play it off of uh, my, like I was gonna do like a screen share, or not a screen share. I was just gonna play it off my computer, but. Um, right. Oh, wait, I can make it so everybody can share. There you go. You can share now. Well, <clears throat> when you go to I share, do... when but, you go but... to share. Hi, Ronnie. <laughs> hey, Nancy, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I look all right, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm just kind of hanging out with you guys, you know. Just, That's you what know. it's all about. Yeah, what a gorgeous... <laughs> Hey Ronnie, I was telling Nancy we should do we should have done this show outside somehow, but we had enough trouble getting it set inside. So, yes. Um, well, I mean, the two of you and all the years that you've been singing. I mean, come on, it's not like you've ever had a you've never had a technical issue here or there during a sound check. No, 
right? No, that never happens. Never happens, right? Yeah. I don't even know why they have sound checks. <laughs> uh, you should call them unsound checks. Un unsound, absolutely. I do agree right, so with we that. Got, right now, only I'm only seeing Dino commenting, and and Dino just said, "What's up, Daddy?" I guess he's not talking to Nan. What's up, Daddy? When are we playing some golf? I'm an, that's, oh, that's addressed, yeah. that's addressed uh, yeah. to you. Ronnie. Some sometime soon, Dino. I will call him about that. Absolutely. All right. All right. So there you go, Dino. Um, uh, I don't know what kind of a golfer Dino is. I, I have a general idea of what kind of a golfer you are, but well, Dino is much better than I am. I can. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. All right. Um, so yeah, we're gonna. This room is going to populate. I, I mean, I think we had some people that. Um, it's on my regular page. It's on the new page, which we want to tell people about, and uh, I put it on my Nancy Kelly music page. Is it on your Eric Cohen page as well? I'm gonna check right now. We just got Beth Ann uh, dropping in to. Yeah, they, uh, they'll find it. We'll get this um, all straightened out. Yeah, I, I'm gonna. Uh, Here, I'll, I'll. Yeah, it's on your page, Eric. It is. I see it. So, so we're. We're rolling. We're rolling. Um, it's time out. Week number six. Eric Cohen, Nancy Kelly, and uh, you know that gentleman, indeed. Mr. Just got Beth Ann, uh, I'm sorry. Dropping into, yeah, they, they'll find it. Oh, yeah. Jeez, uh, I'm sorry about that. All right, I'm all set. Our guest is, uh, who's our guest again, Nancy? Oh, Ronnie sure. Lee. Ronnie you Lee. Got, you, can, you can never just say Ronnie Lee. You have to say the no. great Ronnie. Hey, listen, Ronnie knows I give him. Sometimes my introductions are longer than uh, than his sets. So. <laughs> no shit. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. And I tell you what, uh, Frank Malfitano, who we all know, and Frank's going to be a guest on the show in three weeks. Frank used to he used to give me the business and saying, "Hey, man." Come on, just keep it short. Keep it short. Don't give me one of those EC intros, you know. But I'm sorry, I, you know. I just like to, I just like to, you know, squeeze as much in as I possibly can. But yeah, Jazz Fest, I was always, I always knew it was like I was pressed for time. But, um, but when I introduce you guys uh, over the years, uh, I feel like you don't, you don't mind that I stretch it a bit because you guys have so many accolades and so much love in this community and i want people to realize that, that these are the two honestly in my estimation the two finest voices that we have in all of central new york my, not that my voice is crap but thank you but but you guys have told so many great stories through your performances over the years and now to have us all together during these very um unusual times um i'm glad we're together um but it, it's under very uh difficult circumstances ronnie what what's what's the last couple of months been like for you i mean nance and i have been doing this show for a month now but you know you and i have talked a few times what's uh, what's life been like for ronnie lee since uh since pretty much the age of live music came to a uh well a halt. yeah since March. Well, I, I came back to Syracuse uh, from Florida in March and was trying to keep up with the news and realized uh, that there was a strong possibility that everything would just be canceled, you know. Mm. And when I got back, I, I came back, oh, I think it was like March 12th. And the emails were pop jumping off of my computer and I was getting phone calls and everything was canceled, which I, I did expect. Uh, so it's, it's been a little bit difficult at, at this point, you know, it's been difficult for, for generating any income. It's been difficult for not being able to use your instrument. Uh, you that, know, so that's something just, I find extremely difficult, not singing. That's, yeah. yeah, it's really hard. It, it is, it is difficult, you know, you I, and, uh, you, you end up, uh, I, I haven't. I haven't done enough exercising to keep the cords uh, free of whatever might fall on them over this quiet time, you know? So, uh, you know, but uh, just have to deal with it. I have managed to get out and play golf a couple times and, uh, 
that's been wonderful uh, to get out in, in the sunshine. Other than that, uh, if, I, if I don't go to the grocery store, I'm here uh, or I'm on the golf course. I did uh, manage to, uh, to, to put together a virtual performance with a band that I really enjoy working with out of Rochester, Primetime Funk. Oh, man. I would love to show everybody that video. I don't I, have it pulled up, but that big you know, video is fantastic, well, Ronnie. The thing is, the thing is, I have the video pulled up. Problem is, I have it on my computer, and so if I were to play it, it's gonna. It, I think it, 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 it's gonna lag a bit. But I would love to play some of this track because it, the the title of the cut uh, is so timely. Uh, what you're gonna do? when the world's on fire. I mean, I could play it off. Do you from... know how to use computer sound and get so that you're not getting it off your computer speakers? Uh, you got that all set up? I mean, I can I can get, pull this video up and have it so people can see it and hear it. Well, visually. yeah, if you can, if you if you can do it, because I, I think I got a it chance on to YouTube, look... Ronnie. Uh, yeah, it's yes, on... it's on YouTube. Yes, it yes, is. It is. Well, you I search Ronnie Lee on I'll YouTube. I'll find it. What what should I be looking for, Ronnie Lee? Just, just search so, Ronnie. No, I just but, searched Ronnie Lee on YouTube, and this was literally uh, one of the like the third link down. Um, Prime is that Time where you Funk. found it? it? It's also at at Prime Time Funk, but, which is uh, which is what the band is. All right. But if Nancy <laughs> plays it. It's in real time, and. Yeah, I, uh, I can share it so it'll be uh, in real time. So I think we should watch this because this is worth. Oh, that's really uh, nice of you guys. That's and now, uh, oh, we, and you're seeing. Uh, I don't know what you are even talking about, man. You killed it. You oh, just wow. killed you. it. You were so in tune. I, 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 and it just was. Well, why should I talk about it? Let me, <laughs> share, let me share, well, this. share. 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 Let me share it a, a little bit for you, though. The, the guys, yeah. every one of those guys is just a, a wonderful musician. And uh, are, are, are you showing it right now? I'm going to start it up right now. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. We got to hear this guy come in. So I heard from Andy Calabrese that David Cohen was late
Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, man, it was fun. It oh. was fun, man. Wow. Uh, that, thank you, thank you for doing that, Nancy. Oh man, yeah. no, that just is killing. And it brought brought me back to what? what? Oops. I'm sorry. Whoa. Well, YouTube went to another video. It brought <laughs> me back to a time I, I, when I knew we were going to be together today. I said, "When did I first meet Ronnie Lee?" Oh, where I was, thinking was that the exact that? same thing. Well, do you have, I can tell you what I remember. Would you please? All right. So here's what I remember. Now, as people may or may not know, I am from Rochester, New York. And to be precise, Scottsville, New York, which is a little tiny town south of Rochester, New York. But anyway, I was in that music scene up there. And, you know, when you're young and in the music scene, you're aware of everything that's going on in a town, you know. And somebody said, man, there's this band, and this place was on Jefferson Road. It was in a strip mall, and it was a nightclub. And oh. I walked in there, and here was Larry Arlotta, Ronnie Lee. It might have been Hanlon. I don't no. know, but all I know is I just went, no effing way. <laughs> <laughs> I just said Wow. No, ain't nothing like this in Rochester. And I was <laughs> mesmerized. And I just said, I got to find out who this singer is because he's just wow. incredible. And of course, Larry, I mean, you lo you're watching Larry, you know, in the whole thing. Oh. And you're just going, ain't nobody like that in Rochester. So then what happened was I said, I better get my butt to Syracuse, find out what's going on over there. Uh. <laughs> Wow. And then somewhere we met, and I don't even know what that band was. Do you know what that band was? Yeah, that was uh, Atlas Linen Company. It was Atlas. Yeah. So you horns we... and everything in that band? And... Yeah, 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 yeah. There were, there were four horns in the band. That was another 10-piece uh, ensemble. And uh, the drummer, as a matter of fact, was, was Larry's cousin, Frank DeFonda. Oh, that's right. Forgive me. Yes, Ronnie right. France was playing bass. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Mm -mm. Yes. Ah. And, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Ronnie spoke to you last week. I caught like the last few minutes of, of your show with, with Ronnie last week. And he was telling you about a band that, that preceded uh, Atlas Linux Company, and that was called Flight. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Flight was at Sulin. Flight consisted of Ronnie, myself, Larry Alada, and Frank DeFonda. Oh, okay. Wow. And the way the way the, the things were going on, there was a band on SU's campus called uh, the Airport Horns. I don't remember that. Well, that horn section used to stop into Sioux Lynn and sit in with us down there. Woo! A horn section sits in? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me tell you something. It was such a blast. It was <laughs> such a blast. And... Uh, so then uh, the, the, the idea came up, Larry and I spoke about it. Uh, I think Ronnie might have been part of that conversation. And we said, hey, man, we need to do something with horns. So then we, we ended up doing our first public gig uh, with, uh, with, with, with no charge in Thorndon Park at the amphitheater. And yeah. uh, we, we just set up and did it, man. And it was great. And the rest, uh, the rest is history, as, as we know. So it was a wonderful, wonderful time. Just great. Well, so, <clears throat> pardon me. So I'm trying to figure out where did we meet then? Did we meet at that gig? But I don't remember meeting you because I was just standing there like a child in awe. I was like, I probably wouldn't have come near you. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't recall either. And I was thinking of it earlier today. I was the same thought that, that you had. I was wondering where and when did we meet? You know, uh, I remember there was a practice in some upstairs thing in Armory Square somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I had come to that just to, you know, because back in those days, we all just hung out, you know. Yeah, right. And I came just to watch you guys practice. I think that's what it was. I, this is this is a question for Ronnie France, because he, he you know, would right, probably no. remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, un unless you came to Albino's, which is where 
every band in the city was rehearsing over near the uh, the uh, Destiny Mall. But was it upstairs? Yes. That was it then? Yes, it was. That was it. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. And then I just yeah. felt, I said, oh, man, I'm in now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Oh, it's, that... but it's great. So, but <clears throat> honestly, we've been, as they say, knowing each other for 30, oh, yeah. 35 40. years, 40 years. Yeah. Absolutely. You've been you've been doing your magic, and I've been doing mine, and like every once in a while, we get to be together. Yes, yeah. and yeah. that is like something that we both cherish and love a lot. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. As a matter of fact, I was looking at a a, a picture earlier. Now, wow! Look at that. Yeah, that's a great, that what a great shot. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, this shot really there. captures the kind of electricity and fun that happens when Ronnie and I hit the bandstand together. Oh, that's, it's, that's, it's, it's a great time. You know, I it's think really, I can see that. I can see, I believe it's the WAER banner in the background. I think that might have been oh. uh, at the end of a, a gig at uh, Beard Park. It, it, it certainly oh, was. Oh, it probably. Oh, yeah. I remember that dress. I remember wearing that dress. Yeah. You, uh, you guys, uh, you know, uh, Ronnie would do a set. Nancy would do a set. And then at the end, you guys would do a little. You would just trade fours and eights and all sorts of things. And it was. It I was can't so keep up with Ronnie when it comes to scatting. No, He's a scat no. To see, man. <laughs> You. I'm trying to keep up with you. Dad. Well, you know, I got other stuff. It's okay. But the scanton, I don't ever get it really right. <laughs> I just kind of, I hack my way through it. I say, you know, I tell real time when I'm on the gig with, with uh, Rick, who's a master, you know, I say, man, I'm just going to scan here. You just plug your ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. By no. the way, uh, don't, Ronnie, don't follow yeah. me, though, because I'm lost, okay? Yeah, I know. Don't follow me. I'm lost. You know, <laughs> but, you know, that's really poor Eric. I told Eric, you, uh, that, um, you know, that's the thing with with jazz. And, and I, ta I always, I love this phrase because I tell my students all the time, but Coleman Hawkins said, if you ain't making mistakes, you ain't trying. Mm. Yeah, and you're not learning either. You're not learning. Yeah, Absolutely. So, you know, we all get out on the band saying, I don't care who you are, and I don't care what level of the business you're in, you're never not in search mode. <laughs> true. Yeah, Where's true. that note? I'm going to find that note. <laughs> you know, I could just sit back. I don't even need to, I don't even need to say, I'm going to just sit back. And just I know, but we, we got so much history. And we you know, so, there's so much one, you know, but Ronnie's always stayed more on the R&B side, which, I mean, oh my God, who has got that voice? I mean, now, <laughs> unbelievable. I got some, uh, Steve DePrague made a comment, and, and it was actually a question that I'm, I was going to ask both of you guys. Um, Steve's comment saying that... Um, and I don't know. I, this I is, don't know. I, 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 I don't, this is I debatable. He, I, but, I don't think he's right about that. Okay, well, here's the comment, and then that'll lead into my question. Steve Dupra's comment says, Nancy plays way better trombone than Ronnie. Now, listen, uh, if anybody uh, listening has heard Ronnie... No. You got your trombone, man? Let's go wait in. Minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Here, man, wait a minute. You dig? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is that? That's a trombone. Get the but, <laughs> but the I can't get That's an order. Trombone, anymore. I forget, you know, uh, no, what I, my question though, and the thing I've admired about you both for all the years I've known you, and, and I honestly can't think of anybody else in central New York who who does the vocal uh um uh, what's the word? Uh the magic that you guys do but you don't just use your voice you can turn your voices into musical instruments and again i've heard ronnie do it with the the trombone i've heard nancy do it as well with a trombone or maybe with a muted trumpet oh you're How forgetting one of the things that we both do because we both came out of the El Jaro school 
come from like when, when did you first decide you know what I, I i can use my voice and transform it into what truly sounds like somebody's playing a trombone but you're just using your voice in a different way like how did that first come about for both of you when did you decide to, to use your voice for for more than just you know the vocalizing well for me uh i can remember listening to in my father's car when i was a kid the mills brothers oh and that that's where that first impacted me not that i knew that i would be doing it later in life uh but then uh i, I was in a, a in a band called sail we toured all over the oh. u.s and canada and, and uh, did a lot of a lot, a lot of the heavy rooms around the country vegas and all that kind of stuff and we did a bit uh uh, that was called Freddie Feelgood and his funky little five-piece band. We, wow. It was a six-piece band, and but everybody in the band uh, sung as an instrument. There were oh. no, yeah, okay, so we did that then. Uh, when I really started to 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 I guess recognize that maybe I could use that yeah. was uh, I was doing a wedding man years ago. I had a band called Alliance. Yeah, I don't that band too. Sure. We were we were we were uh, doing a wedding in Casanova at the Brewster Inn. I'll never forget it. And uh, we're doing we're doing <laughs> we're doing these tunes, and there was a tune that was arranged where there was supposed to be a trumpet in there at one point. And the guy I don't know what the trumpet player was doing. I don't know where he was. he wasn't even I don't even think he was on the bandstand, but he should have been. <laughs> so but he was sitting in with the horn section down the road. <laughs> I, don't, I don't I don't know what he was doing, but. Uh, Nobody, nobody took the solo. So I just stepped up to the mic and took the solo as though I were a horn. And that's that's what happened to me. And then since then, I've just enjoyed it, you know, every, occasionally, you know. Yeah, uh, I, I think that's sort of, you know, as the story goes, how this all got started anyway, with Louis Armstrong for getting the words and then just Zuba Zub and Ziba Zab and Zubop, you know, that's where the story, we, of course, you and I both know it goes back before that to Babs Gonzalez and other things like that. But yeah, nevertheless, yeah. I mean, the point of it is we're jazz singers. We're always in the mode of thinking like an instrument anyway. So yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter whether it's a word or a sound. You know? no, do you no. agree with that, Ron? I, I, I do agree with that. The information needs to be put out there uh, in some form. You know, and if that's what a vocalist uh, leans on or, or heads in that direction, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, uh, I, I think it's great. I think it's wonderful. Uh, it, it, it's it's kind of like scat, you know. Uh, you know, you should use it uh, if you are able to, but I don't think you should overuse it. You know, I think, I think <laughs> there are a lot of things going on with scat today that maybe you can go on. Well, there, there becomes a, a point very quickly where it becomes unique to being uh, self-consuming, you know. Yeah, it can be. It can be. I, I, I just, the guys, the guys at Soul, you give say, oh, take, you give somebody a solo, and they'll take four choruses. Of course, that doesn't happen to you or I anymore. But when I was a young jazz singer, that happened. You know, they were just gone. They were gone for an hour. I'm like, well, I'll go get a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's that's the thing for me with, with, with the trombone. And as I held up earlier, I'm going to learn to play this one also. Oh man, are you really? Wow, yes. you're going to mess your beautiful lips up. Uh, I'll have to buy some new ones, <laughs> <laughs> which we're not far from being able to do at this point. <laughs> yes, oh yes, man, yes. so yeah, well, so. So that was that, you know. We're having fun, man. Talking with uh, Nancy and I, talking with 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 Ronnie Lee. And uh, listen, I got to Syracuse in the fall of '89. Um, went to college, um, and all I've heard about for the last thirty years is 
how I just missed out or it was the tail end of just a great time for jazz in central New York. You, you touched on earlier clubs like Sue Lin's and Sakura's. And uh, I mean, there's, there's tons of others. I mean, I, I wish if I could go back at a time machine, I wished I was a part of the jazz scene here in the, the 70s and 80s but 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 for somebody that never got to go to sue lynn's or sakura's i know i'm i'm i I feel bad saying that what what was one of the reasons you're alive today is because you didn't (laughs) okay my goodness (laughs) but but what what was it like having so many different places to play back in the in the in the 80s I, I thought it was great, man. You know, people were out, people were supporting uh, jazz music. They were supporting live entertainment, period. You know, and we were fortunate to have places, like you say, that uh, Sue Lin and, and Sakura, uh, uh, Daniel Webster's was even trying to do something. Oh, I remember that too, yeah. Yes, yeah. you know, uh, and then al- al- along with the other things that, that were happening, you know, Frank Maffetano had the jazz festival rolling with heavy steam at the time, you know, so if people were taking part in that, uh, you know, there, there was so many great things go, going on here. Uh, there was uh, Scratch Daniels had a Wednesday night going on, you know, downtown. Uh, so I used to walk in there and go, am I in Syracuse? Yeah. Oh, yeah. His name was Scratch Daniels, really? <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's a that if that's not a if that's not a, a a jazz name, I don't know what is. Yeah, Scratch Daniels was was a wonderful place. As a matter of fact, that's where uh, I, I can remember Joe Magnarelli coming in there and sitting in, and uh, he, he was just beginning to play, I believe. And today, I mean, if you say Joe Magnarelli, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. That's what going to New York does for you. Yeah. That's what working hard does for yeah. you. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> you can be great, but if you ain't on the scene, yeah, it's tough. Um, you know, you know, Ronnie, we had, um, we did, of course, have Ron, Ronnie France on last week, and we just saw Ronnie earlier in that video, of course, uh, playing bass in primetime funk for the song. Uh, what you're gonna do when the world's on fire, and and um, also got to see my guy Vince Urquilamento. Doing yes. his thing on the on the sax, but um, last week Ronnie uh, brought up Larry Arlotta's name. I had a feeling that you'd bring up Larry's name. Uh, he told some uh, some stories last week. We actually had Kath- Kathy was in the chat room, but um, when I first got here to to Central New York, I couldn't see the name Ronnie Lee without seeing the name Larry Arlotta. I know it could take an hour, but what did Larry mean? What did he mean to you as just a musician and also Fair as a question as a friend? I know that's a loaded question, but wow. I mean you guys were magic together. Well, thank you for that. And it and it was magic. Uh I haven't felt that since. But uh Larry was uh a dear friend and a best friend. And uh if not for Larry, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today in the music business. Mm. Uh, yeah, fact. That is a fact. Um, and uh, I, I miss him dearly. I think of him daily. And uh, boy, <laughs> I'm getting a little choked up here. It's tough for me to talk about him. You know, uh, I, yeah. I, I do. Uh, so, sometimes I, I sit at the piano and try to play. And uh, I, I was one day I was working on a piece. And my hands did something and this chord came out, but I had no idea of what was going on. And all I could say was that had to be Larry. Wow. Yeah. You know, he also uh, is the one who, who Larry left me his uh, Korg SG-1D digital piano oh. before he died. And uh <laughs> this is amazing, man. And he told me to go out and pick up a book to exercise with, which I went out and buy, I bought it immediately. And I looked at the first lesson and I haven't opened it since. And I can hear him saying, I told you to stay in the book, didn't I? You got to stay in that book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Larry, Larry, Larry was a, a tremendous performer, 
Uh, his energy was fabulous. He would do anything for you. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I could go on and on and on about Larry. He's, he's just a, a wonderful person to this entire music community. Yeah, and I, I know he meant a lot to you as well, Nancy, and, and uh, to me. And, and, you know, I don't think anybody who knew Larry could ever say a negative thing about him. I mean, because he just had such a way about him. Uh, how could you not feel good when you were around uh, Larry or a lot of, I can still remember back in the, uh, when they did, they had a big tribute, like a memorial concert for Larry. Do you remember that down at the landmark theater? I well, think I sure do remember it. You, yes. were, you were, you were there, Nancy, I think was there, right? Yeah. Well, I'm quite yeah. Sure. I'm quite sure. I mean, it yeah. was an all-star lineup of people paying tribute to a man that they, they loved and, and, and a man that we frankly lost uh, way too soon, you know, but, uh he sure as heck made his mark uh oh he was hilarious too man i gotta tell well, you oh, oh my god yes <laughs> oh my god larry i got stories i can't tell <laughs> well larry, larry was we, we were working in atlas linen company and, and at one point i don't know we we had a little uh little disagreement going on uh and larry wouldn't talk to me for like about Oh man, I don't know, a week and a half or so. We'd be rehearsing and doing gigs, but he wouldn't talk to me, man. You know, and I kept, I, I said to Ronnie Ferris, what's up, man? I said, I don't know what's going on. So one night we, we had finished a gig up at the, I think it was called the Copper Kettle up at the top of Brighton Avenue. Wow. And uh, I said to Larry, I said, hey, man, we got to, we got to talk. Some, something's happening here. Uh, I says, you, you, you got to do anything? He, he says, no. He says, you're going to be here for a minute. He says, you got to go anywhere. I said, no. He says, okay, I'll be right back. Larry never showed back. <laughs> I was standing there. I'm asking guys, go, where did Larry go? Larry left, man. He's gone. He's out of here. <laughs> that was so funny, man. So we talked about it later on and I just cracked up. It was just hilarious. Just yeah. very, very funny guy. Something that what I think time. is an, an, an uh, interesting observation is that Back, back in those days, I was a very hard hitter, too. I was, you know, I hit hard. Ronnie France was talking about it, you know. I, it, we, and that's something that you and I have in common, man. We don't mess around when we get on the bandstand. And Yeah, I, I don't think you should. Well, there's a lot of, I'm just saying we're from an era where people, we gave it up, you know what I mean? We really did. There's a whole different thing going on with jazz singing now. Sounds like a classical singers singing. I can't, I don't even want to get into that. But anyway, um, Larry fit, Larry, when I got with Larry, that was also an amazing matchup because he, whatever crazy thing I did, he just was right there, man. He was like, oh, yeah. yeah, okay, let's build this skyscraper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I was like, wow. So, yeah, here we but are. You're, you're absolutely right, though. You know, when you get on the bandstand, you, you got to hit hard. I mean, why yeah. why go up there if you're not going to give it up? I, I, my, my philosophy has always been that, you know, uh, no matter what day it is, it, this may not be my best day, but whatever it is I have today, when I'm up there, you're going to get all of that. What, whatever it is, you know? So, I mean, and, and that's the way I think you need to go to work. Uh, that's what that's what you're doing. You're working. It's true. Well, it, it is work, but it's also joyful work. But, you know, I used to, I don't know about you, but I would come home, and I still do. I come home, it takes me a day to recover because I've not only given up physical energy, I've given up emotional energy. And it almost takes a minute to, to, to refill that well. You know, because we, it's like for real, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, you're lucky it's only a day. It takes me a month and a half. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, wonder, <laughs> no wonder you're going golfing. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying he unwinds on the golf course. I mean, please. <laughs> Wait a minute. I got to show you this picture here. Wait a second. Uh oh. Uh, yeah. Let's uh -oh. see. Uh -oh. oh, my goodness gracious. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that something? All right, so who's in this picture? Yeah, tell us, Ronnie. Well, 
from the left, I'm sure you recognize me. At least I hope you do. Oh, uh, I knew. Ronnie, I knew. That's the way you looked when I first saw you. I didn't know that, Ronnie. No. Over, over my right shoulder is Ronnie France. Mm -hmm. uh, over his right shoulder is Nick Russo. Behind him is Ron D'Augustine, trumpet. Oh, right, right, trumpet. And back in the corner is Larry's cousin, the drummer, Frank DeFonda. Oh. To Frank's left, coming up towards the front of the picture, is trombonist George Feltman. Who's yeah. still on the scene and working hard. Yes. Yeah. And in front of George is a saxophonist. Man, this cat was so hot. Man, oh, my God. Keith Ronan. Keith, Keith, Keith is in Florida now, but man, what a player. I'm telling you, he was something else. In front of him, a guitar player who he, he always said to me, he says, man, he says, I don't see it on, on my voice. He was always, man, I, I thought Stu's voice was something amazing. And what a player. What a player. Stu Heinrich. Oh, um, I remember that name. Yeah, Stu, Stu was killer, man. And next to him, oh, man, this is my buddy. This is my birthday buddy. This is, <laughs> we used to have a ball together. Donnie Allen, trumpeter. Oh, yeah. Now, he used to stop by Sue Lynn's. Oh, yeah. I remember him stopping by Sue Lynn's. Well, he worked at Sue Lynn with me in Alliance. Okay. Uh, and, uh, of course, you recognize Larry Alada with the suspenders here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that that was the band. What, what a wonderful time that was. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Nice. Yes. Times, uh, times, uh, the times they are changing. Um, One might say, say you have shared a wonderful, wonderful piece of your talent in life with so many people, Ronnie Lee. Oh, we well, all well, want to thank you, and you have no idea how much you're loved. You just well, have no I wanna, idea. I want to thank you all. And I'll tell you, uh, it's been my good fortune to work with all of those musicians. You know, if... If I hadn't had the opportunity to work with them, I don't know where I'd be. I know that I wouldn't be doing this, as I said earlier, if not for Larry Arlotta. But uh, to have the, the, the good fortune to work with all those musicians, they have impacted my life in ways that they don't even realize. Each and every one of them. They have really impacted my career. No, it's true. And Ronnie France and I were sitting here going uh, last week, we we played with some incredible. I mean, these are not run of the mill players, man. These are no. kick no. ass guys. You know, I went to Atlantic City. I was down in that scene, and there was guys down there. They were okay. They were okay. Yeah. We yeah. had uh, these guys were on fire up here. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, Nancy, you know this, uh, and Eric, you might recognize it also. But you know, as Traveling around the country, I've seen a lot. There are small pockets that are similar to what, to what the level of energy and performance is here in Syracuse on, on a lot of these guys that Nancy's talking about. But, you know, for the most part, I, I, I go to places and I hear people play and I go, well, man, where is it? You know, you, you know you're uh, not making me sweat. If you don't make me sweat, you're not playing, man. I you mean, <laughs> having, having been on the radio and played... I always got joy in playing Nancy's records. I always got joy in playing your recordings, the Apple Jazz records. Um, great record. Great. Uh, um, you know, anytime a, 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 an artist, a Central New York artist would put out an album, I, I always took extra pride in playing that. But I, listen, I would always say to people, I would talk to my um, radio promoters around the country and say that I put, I put this um music community and the the caliber of musicians that we have here and have had here uh going back you know decades i would put the central new york music scene and its history uh and and the current crop of players that we have up against any area anywhere in the country because I these totally agree these totally. are main, these are main, does too i don't i don't I don't like the term. I'm sorry. I don't like the term. Oh, yeah, he's a regional, a regional uh, musician. You don't no, get no. You one of us going on that. The people <laughs> that we, the people that we have here in Central New York, I put up. Th these are musicians, 
period. And, and I put them up against any crop of musicians anywhere in the country. Like you said, there are pockets and there are cities and there are areas of the country that have a strong, uh, a strong music scene, strong jazz scene. But man, here in central New York, the last 30 years growing up, the son of a, a jazz pianist. I mean, man, I, I am blessed to have gotten to know people like you and uh, and Nancy and Ronnie and Ron France and Rick Montalbano and Joey Carello and and uh, and Larry Arlotta and uh, you mentioned George Feltman. Happy 39 years, by the way, to Atlas Linen Company. 30, 39 years for Atlas. Yeah. So again, this is uh, such a special, special community and, and Everybody appreciates both of you and the love that you have brought to them over the year and the love that you're going to bring them when we finally get back to performing. I got more notes. How about you, Ronnie? I got a few more. I got a few more notes. Yeah, I think so. I, I got some, And I got some measures to put them in, too. <laughs> <laughs> By the, by the way, a couple, couple of comments I, I want to mention. Uh, uh, my... Uh, my buddy Dave Casper, uh, who uh, runs Jazz in the Burbs over at the Green Gate in Camillus, mentioned, uh, don't forget about Copperfields. Copperfields, uh, that, that's where Larry left me standing at the end of the gig. Top of Brighton Avenue. Oh, that's where he left you standing? Yes. Copperfields. Copperfields. Okay, okay. Uh, Mr. Malfitano, Frank Malfitano. He's joined us. Popped in and said that, yes, next year Atlas turns 40. Uh, 40 years for Atlas uh, next year, and uh, we can only hope that come next year, Atlas and and every other musician is going to be out playing, and, and we're going to be able to enjoy these performances live because there ain't nothing like live music. So, Frank, uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks for that comment, and, of course, thank thanks to Frank Malfitano for yeah, it's everything that man has done for um, promoting... Oh jazz in central new york and bringing some of the biggest names in the industry to this area oh yeah we don't mess around around here i said everybody hold tight because we're just reloading yeah. right <laughs> right um and then um we had another comment don't forget and listen i mean we, we could go on all night but don't forget and they mentioned two names in particular um vinnie falcone and butch strong, butch strong. Lyman. absolutely i know i know uh you both uh New, I didn't. I didn't know Lyman that well, but uh, I know you. You both. Uh, I knew him well enough to get I some shoes Lyman. thrown at me. Yeah, well, the, the Lyman, one? Le, Lyman and I uh, shared, shared the same birthday. Oh yeah. Oh, December twenty yeah. fourth. No, uh, January 29th. Oh. I thought his birthday was on Christmas Eve. No, not from what he told me. <laughs> he just wanted to be like you. Okay, well, I don't know. You got to be careful with that. Anyway, but uh, yeah, yeah, and and let's not forget uh, Sal Mystico, man. Oh yeah, uh, forget. Yeah, it. I mean, you again, know? yeah. There's uh, uh, it, the list is is endless, you know. And not just not just Syracuse, but 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 Nancy's uh, old stomping grounds of uh, I say I've always said Rochester, but Nancy, you say it is Rochester. Rochester. Just Rochester, but uh, between Syracuse and Rochester, and let's not even forget Buffalo too. I mean, this this whole region of Central New York and and upstate New York, some some big time players who have uh, called this place uh, home at one point and still do. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, I hope you guys will excuse me for two seconds. I got to get a drink of water here, so I'll All right. let you guys talk for a second, and I'll be right back. And you're going to grace us with a song. I, Will I you hope. please do that? And 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 listeners, while uh, while go ahead and get your water, honey. Okay. Uh, while while Ronnie is uh, taking a little walk to get some water, we want you. If if any of you guys have any questions for Ron, I mean, this is the time. I mean, he's he's right here. You have him yeah. at your. Uh, hey. Uh, I, you have his attention I, and like, yeah. anything you'd like to know. And again, we're going to go a little longer because we started a little bit later. Frank, uh, by the way, mentioning um, uh, Sal Nistico, Peanuts Hucko, Mark Murphy, all first-tier yeah. cats, best in the land. Absolutely. 
Ain't that the truth, Frank? Ain't that the truth? Oh, By the way, uh, even though Ronnie's back, uh, Ronnie, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to do a quick plug. Uh, I hope Nancy doesn't mind. Oh, if you have, if you if you have not seen this yet, folks. Oh the, no! Don't no don't. Yes. The latest issue of uh, can you see this? The latest issue of Fifty Five Plus magazine. The but, irresistible. Oh, that pl the word plus should be bigger than 55. <laughs> well, I mean, eventually, Ronnie, you and I will be eligible for 55 plus. We're not there You've yet. Been on there. You've been in there on that. Oh, where did Eric go? I don't know. Oh, there I, he is. I, I, was get, I was getting another call. I'm here. I'm we got Ron on top now, which I like. That's good. Anyway, uh, I encourage people to pick up that, the issue. It's a wonderful article and... Uh, and you are irresistible, I must say, Miss Kelly. You no, are. I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about Ronnie Lee. I want to hear All right. Ronnie Lee. Uh, Can you well, sing something ahead. special for us? Well, we got a question, though. Oh, we do? Uh, from Mr. Frank Malfitano. And I want to again mention that Frank will be joining us on this program three weeks from today on the final Sunday of June, June the 28th. Uh, Frank asked, Ronnie, when are you recording again again i will be doing it as soon as the equipment i just ordered gets here yeah we got to do that stuff from home now so yeah. i'll be doing a home studio and uh i'm also uh just about to get at some tracks that i recorded uh with a septet that i worked with quite a bit down through florida oh they're and terrific you should tell people about that yes. yeah well, tremendous you know, musicians man we uh, we we did a nice show at a place called the Blue Bamboo in Orlando, and uh, it's in Winter Park actually. And uh, so I got the tracks there, so I have to listen. We did audio and video, so I have to uh, to uh, to listen to that so that everything can be edited and put together. And that should be the next thing uh, prior to me learning enough about engineering my own home projects. But, uh, and I believe Primetime Funk is, uh, is writing more and more, and we will probably have something released uh, sometime soon, I hope. Fantastic. So, that yeah. tuned me. I, I I wish, I don't know a lot about that world. Like, where does that get played? Is, what what radio station? Do Eric Cohen, does, do yeah, jazz that's... stations play that funky jazz stuff? Or is there another? Um... Uh, if it's if, if if Eric Cohen's working there, yeah, they do. Yeah, right. Well, we know that. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, every jazz station, every programmer has, uh, they have different tastes. I mean, some programmers maybe tend to stay away from uh, the the funkier side of jazz. But but if if you want if you want to diversify your your audience, then I, I I think I think there's more stations than you would you would think that do play uh jazz with uh, with a whole lot of funk mixed in so yes well, i think they should be first of all people people like ronnie lee and myself this is the bed of our 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 music uh growth i mean this is where we both came from you know this yeah. funky stuff man and i i think i love i don't know about you ronnie but i'm really loving how people are coming back to it they're really coming back to it you know? Yeah, I'm 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 enjoying that. I mean, like, there's a lot there's, there's a lot of spirit there that people have missed for a long while. You know, I, I think they're coming back to that. I think they're coming back to 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 some of the sounds that were uh, produced and given to us through the '70s. You know, a lot of that stuff out of Philadelphia and that Staten. gambling, hot oh, gambling, yeah, hot. yeah, yes. you know. I think that that's the stuff, and I think a lot of it is finding its way back into the room so to speak through what has been labeled smooth jazz you know so that's that's what well, I guess that, that's sort of what my conversation was about was i think we're gonna see things move differently across the airways i i, yeah. I really do i because i think people are coming back around to all this stuff and yeah you know well i think you know yeah and we need to uh we need to, uh, I guess, a few more pieces uh, that are uh, speaking to social consciousness also. I, I think that that will help uh, 
greatly. So, uh, you know, all, all, all of those things I think are big. I think they're on the horizon. I think they're, they're, they're moving forward and uh, we can, can, we can help uh, move that. Absolutely. Quick comment, Ronnie, from uh, our guest from last week, uh, Ronnie France. Loved Alliance. Shout out to the great Rick Capato. Yes, indeed, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eric Capato, what, what a drummer, man. What a timepiece. You know what? Every time I see uh, Ricky and, and Dickie Capato, I, I still just, I, I never want to say, hey, hey, Ricky or hey, but I still sometimes can't tell the difference so i i, I just kind of say hey man good to see you i just kind of <laughs> yeah. I, I i feel i'm gonna i'm gonna misidentify one or the other but uh, those are those are good guys the capados you know great guys they're, they're wonderful people if if you don't i I've, I've always felt that if you meet either one of those people or anyone from that family yeah you like, if you don't like anyone from that family something is wrong with you Something is terribly <laughs> wrong with you because those are really, really good people, man. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, and then one other question that popped in here, uh, Rosalind, who I know has been a regular with us for weeks now, um, and I think I know the answer. Did either of you um, play the Dinkler? Oh, yes. Sure. Oh, my to, God, yes. Yeah. That, I yeah. To, I used to to work the dinkler with bobby hamilton who <laughs> I <know>. yes <laughs> yeah oh i used to work the dinkler. He's, yeah. still on, he's still on facebook i run into him every once in a while around here yeah, yeah. If, as a matter of fact uh there's uh uh the jazz corner which i, I worked the jazz corner in hilton head uh south carolina great room yeah uh, and Bob Masteller, who, who right. has sadly passed away, Bob was a, a trumpeter, a flute hornist, who also worked at the Dinkler. And when I first worked at the uh, at the Jazz Corner, we talked, and we, he and his wife and I spoke, and she said, did you work? I go, oh, yeah, 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 I was at the Dinkler. And they said, that's where we thought we remembered you from. You know, it was, it was that sort of, it's just great. Just like a, a while great, ago. Great. <laughs> I know, <Yeah. laughs> I know. Absolutely. What a time. Oh, what a time indeed. Um, man, uh, wow, it's it's uh, it's uh, eight fifteen, but I mean, I feel like, you know, it feels like we just scratched the surface, you know, I mean, there's like so many other things we could we could talk about. I know Ronnie wants to uh, um, play a song for us. I, I'll throw out one other thing to you, Ronnie. We, we did this uh, with Nancy's daughter on our second show and I'll throw it out to you. Uh, do you remember the first concert that you ever attended? The first concert that I ever attended was at the New York State Fairgrounds. And uh, I was there with my father. Uh-huh. The, uh, it was in Chevy Court. I don't, I, I think that's what they called it at that time. I'm not certain. Yep. Right. Uh, but, uh, uh, and the performer was Lionel Hampton. Oh, yes, man. It, it was an amazing, amazing show. Yeah. That, that'll open your eyes right up. Right. Yeah. You got that right. <laughs> wow. Lionel Hampton at the, uh, at Chevy court. Oh man. That's my, my cousin was asking us, <clears throat> I, I assume she's asking both of us. Are you ever going to play at the jazz festival in Saratoga? I, you know, it's, it's, this is a long and involved, uh, the answer to that is a long involved question. The music business is very political and, um, I don't, I can't say much more about it than that. Do you have anything to add to that, Ronnie? Because you know how, uh, well, yeah, I, I, I guess, uh, yeah, I, I have to agree with you. It's a, it's a difficult proposition, but I think if, uh, with a little focus and, uh, aiming yourself in that direction, it could happen. That's right, a, it's, a, it's a long answer. I wish, you know, it's yeah. hard to explain to people that don't understand that this business is so difficult. And it's, it's a who you know, it's a who you know world. And Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, Wait, politi there's politics everywhere, isn't there? Well, and not oh. only that, there's, there's a lot yes. of there's a lot of stuff going on where, you know, especially being a woman in this business, I can tell you uh, the people that are more interesting now are not my age. 
you know, it's it's hard. It's 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 a hard thing. I don't want to. I don't want to bring everybody down. I'm just saying it ain't easy. <laughs> you know. Trust me, I know it ain't easy being a woman. No, I can't say that. What am I saying? <laughs> um, you don't want to get me going ronnie are you still uh are you still teaching are you still doing lessons or no you know i i got away from it eric okay. uh uh because i didn't feel that the level of commitment that i needed to see from mm. the students was there okay uh, so many of the students were younger and uh, some still in high school. And so many, so many uh, people today are hung up into this reality uh, music thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. And, and they think that, you know, you learn what it is you need to know about singing and performing in maybe a month or so, you know, and it yeah. ain't the case, you know. Uh, so, it, it, it also brings about, uh, with, with that mentality, they also feel that, and the parents help a lot of them be so diversified in the things that they're trying to achieve. They want to play soccer. They want to do uh, some oh other. God, they're sport, overloaded. And they want to do music. So they'll come to you and you have a little consultation and you have an agreement and everything is cool. And all of a sudden you get a phone call and says, well, he or she can't be there for another month. And you say, well, why is that? Uh, I thought we talked about a level Locker. of commitment here. Yeah. And they say, well, the coach says they, they can't be on a team if they, if they, and I'm thinking, well, you can't do this if you're going to do that. So I, I think the parents could help in directing the kids and helping them to understand that do one thing and do it yeah. to your, do, do it the best that you can possibly do it. And you'll probably have a lot more success with it. And the problem, though, some so many of these parents are so much younger themselves that they don't, <clears throat> you know, they don't have a, a clear vision of what it really takes to be a musician. I mean, they're watching those shows too. But I got a great story. This is the funniest story of all. I had a girl come in to my studio one day teaching, and I <clears throat> one of the questions I asked them when they first walked through the door is, "Why are you here? Why are you here?" And she said. I want to be famous. And I said, well, I would go rob a convenience store if I were you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I hear you. It's I a mean, lot there, easier than being a singer. Oh, I, I mean, there, there I, I have had the good fortune of working with some students who are still in touch with me. They're out in the field now and they're doing well. Yes. Some are teaching, some are performing, some are working in, in studios as engineers or producers. And uh, the one, there, is, uh, there are a few, but one that stands out to me, there was a young woman who came to me. She was a sophomore uh, uh, at the time at uh, Fayetteville Manlius High School. And she walked into my studio and we spoke for a while and talked about uh, what it was that I would do. I asked her what she felt I could help her with. And then, uh, and I wanted her to ask me questions. And so we did that. We interviewed each other. And then I auditioned her uh, singing a little bit. And I heard this beautiful sound come out of her instrument. And I was like, oh my goodness. And we worked for a little bit. And I asked her, I said, what do you intend to do with this knowledge that I would like to impart to you? And she says, well, I'm not going to sing. I go, well, what are you doing here then? He said, well, I want to know how to sing because I want to be an engineer. So I want to understand what it takes to produce these sounds. And lo and behold, she went to school. She went to Berkeley. She ended up in California. She was managing a couple of, couple of the boy bands and she's been engineering and coaching. And oh, sound engineering. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Good for her. You know, yeah. that's something I, when I did my last, uh, the, not this, yeah, the last record in New York at that wonderful studio, uh, Trading Eights, that uh -huh. engineer was a musician with a degree in music and theory, and he knew what he was doing. That that's right. makes the difference, man. That it makes the difference. Be. And even mixing over at Subcat with Ron Keck. Ron Keck reads music. He's a musician. He knows, yeah. you know, it's like 
makes all the difference in the world. It really it's does. Very, it's important. It's important. It's important. I don't care what the endeavor is. You need to have the theory behind you in order to approach it. You, know? you do. So, uh, I wish I knew more. I'm, I'm not as well versed in theory. I know enough to make me dangerous. You know what I mean? But I'm. Uh, it's so true. And I mean, you guys know I've never recorded a, a record. I, I'm working on it, though. Eventually, I'll, I'll get to, to get in the studio. Ron Keck, if you're listening, but having, uh, you know, having good musicians around you is one thing, but having people who know how to do the sound and having a good quality engineer is is so key. And so I, I think it's great that that young lady pursued her passion and and. Uh, yeah. Well, there's so much more to it than we, I talk about this all. There's so much more to it. I mean, imagine, Ronnie, imagine thinking how Frank Sinatra walked in, stood in the middle of that studio and just sang top to bottom. And they cut the record while it was happening. They yeah, cut right. the wax while it was happening. There was no going yeah. back. Exactly. I mean, yeah. exactly. Me, I'm in there. Well, let me go back and fix that note and let me fix this uh, note. I mean, like, ridiculous. Lay it down. Let it happen, man. <laughs> That's well, you know, it, it does all go back to, and, and Rosalind um, made a comment, um, and, and I was going to just piggyback off that. We're, we're living, I, I kind of call it like getting food to go. We're living in like, in the music business is like this, a drive-through society nowadays where, where people feel like they want to just get their fame and go. It's like, get your food, yeah. go. Yeah, It's yeah. all about, it's all about instant fame. It's not, and, and, and. It's like paying your dues, I feel, is a lost art. When you have all these different reality shows out there, you got The Voice, you've got a American Idol, you've got America's Next This, America's Next That. And it, it, this, 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 this day and age of, of, of wanting to get famous instantly yeah. is not going away. Well, we seem, to, uh, we seem to be hurried into wanting to glorify somebody's potential. Yeah, yeah. Great, very well put. Absolutely. Very, yeah. I think yeah, it's, you, you can't, know, put it, it's, can't put it any better than that. But I think the, the bottom line and the main point here is the people, the greats, the virtuosos, they do this because they love music. Exactly. Bottom line. Bottom exactly. line. There is nothing. You know, what are we doing? I'm not out working, but I am in, I'm over here fiddling around music every day because... Did you, did you ever try to stop singing, Nancy? I mean, did you ever try to get out of the business? No, no, no. I'm trying no. to get in the business. <laughs> no, I, hear you. I hear you. I tried to quit once. <laughs> what happened? I, I wanted to live the, a normal life. Holy <laughs> crap. You must have gone crazy. What happened? I lasted about two weeks. I thought I, what I felt and experienced emotionally and physically, I wouldn't wish that on anybody on this planet. I I don't I don't know what to liken it to, but I can tell you what, I was losing my mind. Oh, and, you know what? Well, I love what Tony Bennett he said. He says, "I don't I don't want to sing. I have to sing." Mm. Well, here, and with that different. said, would you please sing for us? Oh, oh what a, what a, a little something, just a little something. You're pretty slick, girl. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> We've made people wait long enough, so Ronnie Lee, uh, sing whatever is in your heart right now. I'm going to try to do something that um, that I thought about a, a little bit earlier. I was just messing around with it, and uh, I'm going to play it o over a sequence that I put together. I oh, go ahead. Fine. Yeah, that's fun to do. I do the same thing all the time. Go yeah, ahead. so, so I, I hope this works out. Can, can you hear that? I don't know. Is everything uh, okay? Yeah, there? the mic oh, is. Yeah. I can hear you, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. good. All okay, right. Okay, well, let me see if I can. Uh, I don't even know if I remember this piece, but I'm going to try to do it. <laughs> we'll <laughs> we'll hey, see. Just get, in, get out there and do it. Don't let her rip. Okay. Let's see what we got here. If I can make it happen. I 
I never can say goodbye Even though the pain and heartache Seem to follow me wherever I go I try and try to hide my feelings They always seem to show When you try to say you leave in me and I always have to say no. Tell me why. Is it so wrong? I, I never can say goodbye. I never can say goodbye. I keep thinking that you promised So now I'm going to work out It's that same unhappy feeling Anguish and that doubt That same old empty hanger Can't deal with her Oh, without you tell me why is it so wrong? I can't let her go now. I never can say goodbye. I never can say goodbye.
Oh, ho, ho. What a treat. Yeah. You know, and I, this, this demonstrates wow. exactly what I talk about all the time. If you're going to do something, bring something to it. Don't repeat what's been done. And you brought yourself to that in such a beautiful way, man. Man, Ronnie. That was Un beautiful. Unreal. Next time, do it with some feeling, though, would you? Yeah, right? <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> I'll tell no. you, that was, that was the perfect song choice uh, and the perfect way to wrap up what has been an incredible, incredible show. Um, you are... A true joy and and uh beloved by not not only nancy and i but not only the people that are joining us in this chat room but but people all around central new york and anybody who's ever seen a ronnie lee performance knows that uh they walked away knowing that they got every single ounce of energy that that man had and, and we love you for it ronnie oh, thank you thanks for having me here nancy and eric oh, what a treat what a As treat. We, I'm just so glad for just to see you. Yes, this is good. It's been, been a while. It's been a while. And I, I have a photograph of Nancy, actually. Uh, you know, you, you showed a photograph earlier of, yeah. uh, I don't know which year it was, at uh, Fayetteville Jazz in Beard Park yeah. in Fayetteville. I yeah. have a photograph here from the very first jazz in Fayetteville with oh. Nancy. And, and myself and Donna Alford. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. And it was, I, I believe that was themed uh, uh, Women in Jazz. And uh, it was great. Uh, Nancy was on that gig. Donna Alford was on that gig. Dolores Mancuso was on that Woo! gig. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it was, Woo! It was a yes. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. Some great things happened. Well, Man. We, we don't have anything <clears throat> to plug really because we're we're not really going to be doing any gigs i don't think you said you well, the fall no, I, is what you're looking i at. am doing a gig i am doing it i'm doing a gig next saturday oh uh at turning stone casino in the state in ts steakhouse really oh, okay yeah i will be doing that uh they emailed me and i uh, checked on the protocol to make sure They'd be comfortable and I'd be comfortable and it looks great. So I will be there next Saturday evening. Well, that's wonderful. And 13th. I must, I got to say, Nancy, when Ronnie does a gig at TS Steakhouse at Turning Stone, it's well done. Uh, oh, you. you. It's well done. It's Sorry. Well done. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think yeah. that it's not excellent. It's not well, rare that it's well it's done. Definitely not rare and it's not media. Oh. Sorry, oh, I couldn't. I couldn't resist. You know, and I love when he really digs into it. Oh, it up, man. Nice. All right. wait a minute. I'm going to uh, have to desert this place, man. <laughs> Ronnie, just going to leave you with a couple of last, a couple of final comments here. Um, Susan Soboleski Owens. Yes. Such wonderful memories, Ronnie. It's been 35 years since we first connected those great Atlas Linen and Sue Lynn days. You're better than ever, man. So true. Oh, wow. Thank you, Susan. And then <laughs> this gentleman, Nancy and Ronnie. Yes, the top of our list for sure. And my man, Eric, doesn't get any better. Great job, my brother. Those are the words of Mr. Ricky Chisholm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. Cheers, man. We the love Chisholm. it. Cheers. Ah. Yeah. I love it. I yeah. love it, man. Oh, oh that's he, beautiful. People have had a blast here tonight, and uh, and and this has been uh, this has been a great show. And for folks who want to rewatch the show, uh, we should mention Nance that we do now have an official page for the show. Um, Time out with Eric Cohen and Nancy Kelly. And so, if you missed any of this show, or you've missed some of our previous shows with guests such as Ronnie France and. Ricky Montalbano, uh, we had Nancy's daughter on uh, the second week. And um, you can you can watch all those shows. They're all available on uh, on Facebook. If you go to um, the new Time Out with Eric Cohen and Nancy Kelly page. And we should promote, by the way, the, the guests we have coming up next week. Um, speaking of women in jazz, uh, great lady, great vocalist. Um, Miss Rosanna Vitro will be joining us uh, 
a week from today, um, in two weeks, Father's Day, my father, Ray Cohen, joins us. So it will be a very... Look at his face light up. Isn't that a... Well, nice? yeah, that. That, that's going to be fun. And then we close out the month of June with a show that, that we might go three hours. Who knows? Uh, because this man certainly will has a lot of stories uh, to tell. Um, the great Mr. Frank Malfitano will join us on June the 28th. So that's our lineup for the rest of June. But Ronnie, uh, this has been a treat for, for, for both of us. It's been a real treat. We've yeah. Thank you both for having us. Joined us. And um, thank, thank stay you. safe, Ronnie. Yes, safe. yes. And I got to say one thing, power to the people. Yeah, oh. Amen. All of the power. Yes. Yes, indeed. Let's let's make a change out here. We're going to make a change. I feel it coming. Yeah. I feel it coming. Power to the people. We love you all. We love you, Ronnie. Everybody have, I'm so hungry, I got to go eat. <laughs> yeah. Let's all, let's all eat and unwind, and let's all be safe and love one another and have a great week. And uh, God bless you both for uh, making this a great show, and, and, and God bless everyone. And, uh, again... As Nancy said, power to the people, and power to uh, people. we're going to change. We're going to let's all it. let's all make, let's all start making some changes. Exactly. All right, we love you. We love you all. We'll see you next week. All right. Take care. Thanks, Ronnie. Bye.